Hi, this is Gary with Mac Most Now. On today's episode, let's look at my list of must have applications for Lion. So, I've seen so many lists of must have applications that I just don't agree with. It's not that the applications listed aren't useful or good, it's just that they're not for every user. They're for specific types of users, maybe web developer or video producer. But I've got a list of applications that I think just about any Mac user could use. Let's take a look. So first we have iWork. Now this doesn't come on your Mac. iLife does. But I think most Mac users should get these applications right away. They're only 20 bucks, and if you don't like these specific applications then another Office Suite would do like for instance Microsoft Office. Uh, you can also find some free ones but I find that for 20 bucks a piece these are well worth it. Specifically Pages because most users are going to have to write something whether it's a report or a journal or an essay or just a nicer place to write an email or message to somebody before sending it to them. Numbers in Keynote maybe not for everybody. Keynote can be a lot of fun to play with but if you don't need to make presentations you may want to just put off getting that until you need it. And Numbers mostly for people that want to uh, work with figures. But of course if you balance your checkbook at home or do something like that the Numbers can come in really handy. Now Jump Cut is a free extension that works perfectly in line and what it does is it adds this little menu up here at the top. Let me show you what it does. You can copy something to the buffer as you know. like I'll. Command C, copy macmost.com there, and I could paste it below. I can copy something else, like an email address. Copy that, paste it there. But what if I wanted to actually have more than one thing in my copy buffer and be able to paste which one I want? Well, if I look up here at the jump cut menu, I can see that I've got both of the two things that I've pasted previously in there, and I could actually paste the one before the last. Or I can just copy as many things as I want. The more I copy, the more appears in here. And so you can see you've got this history of your clipboard. It's very useful. Another good one that does basically the same thing but is more bells and whistles is Clip Menu. Uh, Jump Cut is great for most users because it's very simple and just works. Clip Menu has some advanced functionality. Both are free. Now, the next four things I want to show you will add functionality to your browser. Now, if you don't have Flash installed on your Mac already, you're going to want to get it. And even if you do, you're going to want to probably download the latest version because there's always updates. You do that by going to get.adobe.com slash flash player. And that's where you can download it there. And while you're there, get the Shockwave player as well, which is get.adobe.com slash shockwave. Uh, this plays a lot of older content on the internet usually uh, and some 3D games that are on there as well. Both are free. You can just get them. They work great online. Uh, in addition to that, you're going to want to sometimes play back WMV files. These are Windows Media Video files. They don't play back on your Mac unless you have an extension for QuickTime. Uh, you can go here to the this Microsoft page to get it. And actually I've created a shortcut because it's such a long URL. Just go to MacMost.com slash J dash WMV and we'll take you to this page here which actually is on Microsoft but it allows you to download a third party application called Flip for Mac. It's free and it allows you then to play back Windows Media videos uh, in QuickTime and QuickTime Player and also in the browser. And last but not least there's also Java which doesn't come, come installed with Lion but you can get it just by going to this page here uh, at the Apple website. And not only does it support more websites then but there's some applications uh, that will actually require Java for parts of them to run. Now Dropbox.com is another must have. Uh, it's free. Go to Dropbox.com and I've discussed it in many videos in the past and with iDisk going away next year uh, it's great for users to have a way to post files online, to share files with other users and to sync between your Macs. And last but not least we've got 1Password which is very important because it allows you to use strong passwords on all your websites and protects you from phishing attacks. So you can't be fooled to actually using a strong password on a site that's not the real site. Uh, this does cost a little bit but it's worth every penny. There are all alternatives like for instance LastPass. But whatever you do get one of these uh, utilities that allows you to use strong passwords and store them securely on your Mac. I also encourage everybody to check out my guide to online password security. I consider it a must read. It will teach you just the basic things you need to know to stay safe while surfing online so your passwords and accounts aren't stolen by others. So that's my look at what I install on a brand new Mac on the very first day. If you've got a suggestion I'd love to see it in the comments to this post at MacMost.com. Till next time this is Gary with MacMost Now.
Want more video tutorials? Just go to MacMost.com, click on the Videos link at the top of the page and then you can view all of the hundreds of MacMost videos by category.